Yeah. Pippin stared up at Naughty, the grumpy old donkey, and said, Pippin looked at Naughty with a puzzled look on her face and said, What's Christmas? Naughty thought Pippin was being pig ignorant because everybody knew what Christmas was. Naughty began, I hope you remember my family gave the first gift. Naughty told Pippin of how, ev of how the very first Christmas the baby's mother rode on a donkey all the way from Bethlehem and how Christmas could not have begun until she got there. Just then, Bess the cow interrupted and told them of how her great-great-grandmother gave the baby her manger for the baby's bed. My, my, my mother gave the manger for the baby's bed or else the baby would have to go to sleep on the hard floor. <clears throat> Pippin did not understand what the animals were talking about. What manger and what is Christmas? Just then, Curly the sheep spoke up. The, the hay in the manger was full of prickles. Well, was, well, was family? Gave a lamb's fleece to cushion the rough bed, and the soft wool was the best gift. Pippin's ears were now bright pink. But where were the pigs, she wondered. Christmas did not seem to have anything to do with pigs. What present could a pig possibly give to a baby anyway, she thought, especially a baby as special as that one. Pippin kept thinking that if there were donkeys, horses, pigeons, sheep, and cows, there must have been pigs too. But nobody was paying any attention to her. Suddenly, Carew the pigeon cleared her throat and said, My, My great-grandmother and great-grandfather on him to sleep, and that was the most important gift. Pippin wondered once again what gift pigs would have brought to the holy child. She hung her head and made her <laughs> way out of the barn. Once she was far enough outside, she waited for them to call her back, but they didn't. No one had even noticed her leaving, so, so she said out loud, As she set out down the lonely road, she got a gust of wind struck her in the face. Snowflakes stung her in the eyes, and the frost did the tips of her ears. She almost went back, but pushed herself to go on. Soon she was far away from the barn and could no longer see it. She passed a tattered scarecrow who leered at her while waving one ragged arm. Farther down, she saw a blue jay trying to keep warm, huddled in a ball with his feathers all blown backwards from, from the wind. Pippin's feet hurt her and her tail stiffened into a curly little icicle. She thought that she may perish outside on this cold, wintry day, but she vowed to never go back and pushed on. At long last, Pippin reached the end of the main road. She had stopped to catch her breath when far off she caught a glimpse of a woman coming toward her and she was carrying a baby in her arms. The woman had no gloves or hat and her jacket was very thin. The little boy she was holding was very cold. And just then, Pippin heard the woman speak to the child. We have so far to go, but maybe we'll find the barn to rest in. Pippin knew just what to do. She knew where a barn was, but she had promised herself never to go back there, however. This was an emergency. Pippin went up to the woman and nudged her to follow her, and grunted, saying in pig language, Um, follow me. They began to go back down the long road toward the barn. Past the scarecrow once again. A maybe, just maybe, Pippin thought. The scarecrow smile looked a little friendlier. At the barn door, the little pig pushed ahead and said to all the animals, Listen to me. To which naughty the donkey replied, Don't interrupt, Pippin. We're making Christmas plans. Pippin then replied, um, whatever Christmas was, it was a long time ago. I have a baby here right now. All of the animals' mouths dropped. The woman holding the baby looked around and said, It's Christmas all over again. Gently, she put the baby boy down in the manger's sweet hay and said to Pippin, Bless you, little pig. It's warm in here. Warm and safe. As the woman and her baby began to settle, Lightning Bolt the horse spoke up and said, you gave us 
Pippin. Look, Look everybody, they are both asleep. Look All of the Pippin. animals stared up at Pippin, and Curly the sheep spoke up and said, But this isn't a special... Um, but who is this? Peru the pigeon at it. <laughs> We can't take a nobody, some homeless nobody. All of the animals began to talk amongst themselves. Pippin spoke up in her loudest voice ever and said, Listen to me. We'll need milk and some warm work. <laughs> Peru the pigeon spoke up and said, But this is not a special baby. And Pippin replied, Of course it is. All babies are special. And then all of a sudden the animals realized that what Pippin had said was true. The animals heard footsteps in the distance and looked up to see the farmer and his wife at the entrance. Well, it's Christmas right here in our barn. said the farmer's wife. When the couple left, Pippin looked around and saw that none of the gifts were from her. Everything had come from the other animals in the barn. She was very sad and said, You're right, none of these gifts come from a pig. Lightning Bolt the horse spoke up and said, to teach us what Christmas is. You gave us the best Christmas of all. It took a runty little pig to teach us what Christmas is. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you.